grace to you and peace. This is a service of readings and healing prayers for Wednesday, the first week in Advent, December 2nd, 2020. I'm Victoria Sirota, Rector of St. John's Episcopal Church, Getty Square in Yonkers, New York. We're delighted that you are with us. And we are celebrating also the Feast of St. Andrew the Apostle, transferred from Monday, November 30th. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 19, verses 1 to 6. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It gives forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading, our epistle, is from Romans, Romans 10, 8 B to 18. The word is near you on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all have obeyed the good news, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. But I ask, have they not heard? Indeed they have, for their voice has gone out to all the earth and their words to the end of the world. Our gospel today is Matthew 4, verses 18 to 22. As Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So St. Andrew the Apostle is so interesting because he was one of the first called. And there's a story um, about him in the Gospel of John that talks about the fact that he he was one of the disciples of John the Baptist and that when he listened to John the Baptist talking about Jesus and then he went to hear Jesus for himself 
that he ran back and told his brother, Simon, Simon Peter. Now, Peter became the rock on which the church is built. And so Andrew's job was one of messenger, was one of discerning what he was hearing and passing on the message that this indeed was Christ the Savior. And so in some of the stories about Andrew, it talks about, it, 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 it helps to understand this idea that he first was a disciple, that Andrew was first a disciple of John the Baptist, and that John the Baptist pointed him to Christ, and that then he brought Simon Peter there. And other stories then talk about the fact that probably all four of these disciples, um, the first disciples, had actually heard Jesus speaking before, and that when they were ready, Jesus came and called them out of their fishing boats, and they were ready to follow him. So, John, so Andrew's role was that of bringing people to Christ. And that is a huge role. And that is a role that is really significant to speak about during this Advent season. It is recognizing Christ for ourselves and then spreading that gospel news. We don't have to hit people over the head with it. What we have to do is receive Christ into our hearts and then let Christ speak to those who we meet based on our actions and the way in which we connect with them. Sam Portaro, in his Brightest and Best, talks about the fact that there are two other places where we read about Andrew. And one is that there were some Greeks who wanted to speak to Jesus, and Andrew was the one who brought them to him. In other words, that Andrew understood that this gospel message was for the whole world. It wasn't just for Jewish people, that this was something brand new. And he's also the one who saw the young boy in the crowd when Jesus was um, going to feed the 5,000, but he said, is there any food? And Andrew brings forth this little boy that has, has five loaves and two fishes. So Andrew's Andrew's view is just actually extraordinary because this is something that reminds us that we need to bring people to Christ and that we need to allow Christ to speak to us through others. Um, Sam Portaro says at the end, it is time to start making lists and checking them twice, worrying about what to get family and friends. Andrew numbered among his gifts a brother who became a giant of faith and the foundation of the church. Some strangers from Greece whose encounter with Jesus revealed the gospel as a gift for all the world. And a small boy whose meager lunch became the food of a multitude. Andrew gave Christ and life to others simply by giving others to Christ. Who will we bring to the manger this year? Thank you, Sam Portaro, for those powerful words and for the reminder that what we do with this message of love in our heart that has been placed there by the profound gift of Christ our Lord, that we actually have to share it. May God bless you this Advent time of repentance and preparation, of being open to the ways in which Christ might speak to you and giving you the courage to share that message with others. Amen. Our prayers continue with two collects. One is the collect for St. Andrew the Apostle. Let us pray. Almighty God, who gave such grace to your Apostle Andrew, that he readily obeyed the call of your son, Jesus Christ, and brought his brother with him. Give us, who are called by your holy word, grace to follow him without delay and to bring those near to us into his gracious presence, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. And the collect for the first Sunday in Advent. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. Through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And two prayers for healing. One, the first one is for those who are sick. O Father of mercies and God of all comfort, our only help in time of need, we humbly beseech thee to behold, visit, and relieve your sick servants for whom our prayers <coughs> are desired. Look upon them with the eyes of your mercy. Comfort them with a sense of your goodness. Preserve them from the temptations of the enemy and give them patience under their affliction. In your good time, restore them to health and enable them to leave the residue of their lives in your fear and to your glory and grant that finally they may dwell with you in life everlasting through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray for those who are really struggling with pain. And I know quite a number of people who have chronic pain and how fatiguing and depressing and what a struggle that is. So this is a prayer that can be said by those who are in pain. Lord Jesus Christ, by your patience and suffering, you hallowed earthly pain and gave us the example of obedience to your Father's will. Be near to those in their time of weakness and pain. Sustain them by your grace, that your strength and courage may not fail. Heal them according to your will, and help them always to believe that what happens to them here is of little account if you hold us in eternal life, our Lord and our God. Amen. In the Book of Common Prayer, there are some wonderful prayers for use by a sick person on page 461 in the Book of Common Prayer. So you might check those out. They're quite wonderful. And now we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.